Jumping in right where we left off on our last video, I was talking about the bottom of this wall and how that has a lot more detail that we're not going to show because of this detail level. One of the things that we're just going to sort of assume is that the siding starts right at this point. It may not. You might want to think about where your siding courses out to, but for the purposes of a three-quarter inch wall section, it might not be all that important to figure that out. You might figure that out in a detail and then show that elsewhere. Now we've drawn our wall thickness in plan as eight and a half inches, but as we start to actually put our siding here, our lap siding, we're going to realize that this isn't a straight line. and It may actually be different than eight and a half. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that line. I'm going to come over here to this block that I brought in. This is my lap siding block. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to copy it here at the bottom. Now the way that lap siding works is generally you're going to have a piece of that lap siding at the bottom that kicks it out. So it's like a little starter course you could call it. So I'm going to measure this and that's something really specific. I want to say that this is about 3 eighths of an inch. So the first thing I'm going to do is offset 3 eighths of an inch. Actually you know what I can do? I can offset and I can do it visually with this, these two points. And I'm going to do that line. So now that what I'm going to do is move this and I'm going to use that point and that point and grab an inference down to there and that is where I want to start my my lap siding and you can see when that comes back it's coming back right to that 3 8 inch line. So now I can delete that line and I'm simply like I said, there's other stuff going on here. There's that little board there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this because at the scale, you're not really going to see this much. And I'm just going to draw a line joining those two points. Now I can copy this block and I'm going to use this point here and that point meets that point and so on and so forth. Now I'm probably getting a little far ahead of myself here because I got to start figuring out where my window goes. So working up my wall, I know that my window has a rough sill which is a 2x6 so I can actually mirror all of that and I'm just going to mirror that somewhere here, doesn't matter. Trim that rough sill to there and according to my drawing the rough sill for my window is two foot six. So I can stretch this from the top, shift right click from. Um, now that's from, let's see here. All of these dimensions go to the subfloor. So that's two foot six from the subfloor. So let me start that. Let's do this an easier way. Offset two foot six from the subfloor up. Now we can move this whole thing down to two foot six. My rough opening is, what is my rough opening? Four foot six. So half of that is two foot three. So I'm going to mirror this again and I'm gonna go from there two foot three. Just in case I'm going to double check that. Turned out to be four foot six, exactly what I wanted. So there's my rough opening. Now what I can do here is I can kind of trim all this stuff out. Oops, didn't want to do that. Trim between there. Now, some people are probably noticing that my trim looks a lot, or when I'm doing my trim, you might get confused. I have my trim set to, if you go to trim command, down here, there's a mode button. I have mine set to standard. You, yours is probably set to quick. So when you do quick, it's basically trimming to every next piece. But when you do standard, you can choose what it trims to. 
So just keep that in mind as you watch me working here. So now I got my rough opening. Now I can start thinking about getting my window in here. Now here's my window block. Now I've created this for you. And this is based upon a Anderson window. So I used their blocks that I went to, I went to their website and I downloaded their blocks and I created this window and then I kind of simplified it for the purposes of this wall section. And what you want to do, you'll see this this little fin here. This is called the nailing fin. This is how the window gets installed. It gets nailed through this into the structure. That fin is going to be on the face of our continuous rigid insulation. So I'm going to move this and the base point I'm going to click shift right click mid between two points and I'm going to choose the back side of the fin at the bottom and the back side of the fin at the top. And that window unit is going to be centered from the mid between two points the face of my rigid insulation at the top and that aligns with my rough opening and the face of my rigid insulation at the bottom again aligning with the bottom of my rough opening and there's my, that's where that gets located now what you'll notice is there's space between my rough opening and my window unit that is by design this window unit requires a four foot six rough opening the window itself is sized slightly smaller, about three quarters of an inch smaller. And what that does is it allows three eighths inch of space for the top and bottom to shim it level and plumb. So now that that's in place, I can come up here. I can, this, this upper piece of siding, I can explode so that I can trim it. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to take that line and I'm going to place it there. Good enough, right? Doesn't have to be perfect at this scale. And then we can extend that up. I'm going to extend that line up and that line up to there. This line becomes green. To there so I'm going to match properties select a green line and then paint that on and then I'm going to draw this up to there that's my sheathing now my sheathing will actually stop actually let me fix this my sheathing as well as my rigid insulation will stop at the top of that rough opening and get to a yellow line so that'll end there oops I don't know what I did there that line somehow got screwed up fix that so technically all of this goes down here now this is where they will fasten through this foam and into this rough sill and that's what's going to hold this window into place. Now I'm going to draw, let me go back to the yellow layer first, I'm going to draw a line across from here to here so that's where all of my finishes end. The rain screen, this three quarter inch furring strip, which makes up my rain screen, will go in after the window, so that can go up to the bottom of the window. In in actuality, there'll probably be a slight gap there. But again, at this scale, we don't need to draw that. And what I like to draw is that shim space. And I dr usually draw that with just one crossing line. So you can see this as two shims opposed from each other. And I generally draw that with a red line just like the hatch in our in a, a dimensional lumber piece. Okay, so we have our apron, which is three quarters of an inch. Now, I think I noticed a mistake here. This line should align out here with the way that I drew this for this assignment. So something's wrong. Why is this 
coming out so far. So I got to start investigating. Everything else looks right. I've got one inches of rigid insulation, half inch of sheathing, six inches. Somehow I accidentally offset the wrong way, I think, for my for my wall. So this two by six is actually six inches instead of five and a half. So that's what's wrong. I'm going to fix that with the stretch command. Come down here, stretch my wall over one half of an inch. Not exactly sure how that happened, but it's important to fix mistakes when you see them. So now, look at that, that lines up perfectly. Now we can come down 3.5 inches, fillet that, fillet this line, draw another line up to there, we're going to draw that one over to there, and we are going to paint our properties on. For some reason that one didn't go down to there. Oops. And there we go. The bottom of our sill, bottom of our window is ready to go. Now let's continue above our window. So same thing up here. And actually you can see here, if you read the notes very carefully, there is a one in, one eighth inch reveal from this piece of our window which is called the jam extension and that's where our window casing starts so now again this is off right this is also going to be off right so i got to stretch that over too stretch that over uh, one half of an inch So now we go up 3.5 inches for that window casing. Get all the right lines in there. Do a line across there. These lines go to there. Again, get my shim space in there. Actually, that line would go away and this line no, that's right, that line would go over there, but show that line there anyway. That green line ends there. That means that yellow line can go up to there. And now we can fix these. Those are going to be cyan. Now, above a window, anytime you have a window, we need to transfer transfer the loads coming down the wall around the window so we need to install a header so our header in this case there's a horizontal piece and what that allows is a place for our exterior sheathing to get nailed into and then the header itself in this case is two two by sixes now I looked at the opening let's go back up to our plan I went and looked at our opening. Our rough opening is about 5 feet 10. And I figured out that we are supporting basically a roof and a ceiling in this wall above that window. And according to the code, a double 2x6 is enough of a header to span that window opening. So offset 5.5 inches upwards, and there's our double two by six header. Now this becomes cavity up to there. Uh, so then this is cavity. Actually, I'm not exactly sure how I drew the line weights here, but we'll take a stab at it without looking. And again, these are dimensional lumber so we put in our X to show that that's a piece of dimensional lumber and then we can use our match properties to paint those that red line on there we get rigid insulation out here because again we have to fill this cavity with something we need we need insulation everywhere inside of our cavity so there it's easiest to just affix two and a half inches of rigid insulation 
to actually you know what I think I do I think I do it this way cavities there that's a yellow line that goes away and we can extend that yellow line to there trim that line to there put a yellow line in there now we can use our hatch command hatch that and again I just use match properties so I want to grab rigid insulation put it there I almost forgot down here we have rigid insulation our one inches of rigid insulation outside of our sheathing so I can paint that there now the other thing I forgot is our cavity insulation in this drawing or in this house we are doing blown in cellulose so I use for that I believe it's the sand hatch it's basically a series of random dots which actually works for many many different materials so I'm gonna try to find that it's called AR sand and that is way too not dense enough what did I use here I used AR sand and it is 0.5 is the scale so we're going to change that scale to 0.5 and put it on the right hatch layer so home pattern layer All right. look at our reference drawing again so now we're up to here I'm going to bring in same things happening at the window head is we're start well for the purposes of this drawing we're starting a new course of our siding so I'm just going to grab that and copy that straight up to my window head you know there's a little little bit of wonkiness there with where this comes in I'm not really that concerned about that and then again I can copy this up at the scale that this is going to print out that's gonna look just fine copy that up and I'll have to I'll have to break that one once I start getting up here so I'm gonna end this video here and then the next video we're gonna pick up at the at the roof structure here